would be everything in Genesis 2, okay, Deuteronomy, D-E-2. Okay, so Adam and Eve were created here. Adam and Eve were right over here at the very beginning of time on this timeline. Then we have the Torah. And right in here, we have the beginning of the law because the uh, Israelites, they were all here. They went into this period of time. During that time right here, they went into slavery into Egypt. Okay. And right here is the law. All of this is the law until we get to Jesus. And then we have the church age. And the important thing about the church age is it's going to come to an end and there's a resurrection rapture. The big debate is, does it happen, you know, before or after, you know, the tribulation? That's the big thing about that right now. And uh, then you have the millennial kingdom. And then you have the final uh, war where Christ has a war right here and destroys everybody. And there is no more sin, no more death at this point right here, right here at the end of the millennial kingdom. Sin still remains in this time period here because the nations left behind repopulate for a thousand years. They repopulate the earth. And those are the people that did not get caught up in the resurrection rapture. We call it a resurrection rapture, not the rapture, because 99.9% .9 of all the body of Christ will be raised from the grave and a very few will be raised alive. That's the way we look at it. There's 144,000 for sure we know are going to be raised alive. Now that just may be a, a number that represents <clears throat> all the tribes of Israel. And it probably is. The way I've seen God use numbers, he uses a solid, specified number, but that whatever fills that number can be, it can be changed. For instance, the 12 tribes of Israel, there's many lists of the 12 tribes of Israel from the book of Revelation all the way back to Genesis. You see a list of 12 and the names change, but it's always 12, right? So 144,000 is, is the number of people that will be left alive when the resurrection rapture takes place. And we don't know if anybody in America will actually be left alive who believes in Jesus. We don't even know if America is going to be on the map. Can I get an amen? There's a lot of good argument to be made that America is obliterated. In Trumpet 6, in Trumpet 6, we have one third of mankind killed. One third. One third. And that's in the trumpets. That's during the tribulation hour. This little this little circle here is the tribulation because we're the church goes through the tribulation and this little circle is the wrath of God. All right. So we're going to blow that up and look at that in a little bit uh, in a minute. But the trumpet six, one third of mankind, and then the horses have been riding at least since Jesus went up. Jesus is the lamb of God. So these four horses... One, two, three, four seals. One, two, three, four seals have been riding at least since Jesus started opening them. Who's opening them? The lamb, of, the lamb is opening the seals. So the seals, these particular four horses and their power are not going to have started until after Jesus is raised from the grave. I've fi kind of figured that out in my head. So even though the horses are all back here in the Old Testament, four horses, you see them in Jeremiah, you see them in different places in the Old the Old Testament. These four horses have always been around, but something happens with these four horses. They get set on an increasing course to the end of time. Right here, when Jesus goes back up, John saw him opening the seals one at a time. Now, all four of these horses are riding at the same time. They're coming together but Jesus, uh, in the book, we read about them one at a time because you have to read. You can't read about all four of them at the same time, and that's just how books are. They present things chronologically that may not actually be chronological, and that's why the book of Revelation is so confusing to so many people as it is. Okay, so these four horses have been riding forever, but now in in the uh, church age, they really are picking up. And I, I would assume it, in the last three and a half years. That's when we're really going to see the magnitude of these four horses coming to a complete end. And then the fifth seal opens up. Okay. And the fifth, it could be that these horses, uh, let, 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 me, let me show you another chart that I have <clears throat> right here that explains it a little bit better. Seals one to six here. The same kind of things going on here. 
except we're blowing up the end times. Here's, here's the resurrection of Jesus. Now here's the church age here. And this red area represents both the tribulation and wrath. I didn't break it into two circles because down on the bottom, you can see the fifth. Down here, you can see the fifth seal and the sixth seal are separated by the resurrection and rapture. So what I did was I just made a big red circle at the end of the church age before the millennial kingdom begins. You have this, this event that takes place, this very difficult time when all these horses are finally finished developing and we get an antichrist rising up and we get the resurrection and rapture and we have some wrath that God's gonna pour on the earth because we're not appointed for wrath. Tribulation, yes, wrath, no. And these two seals, five and six, in between these two seals is where the resurrection rapture takes place. Okay, so here's chapter six of Revelation. You guys see this over here? This is chapter six. Revelation chapter six gives us all the seals. And that's going vertical when you read it in the, in the chapter. You read it in the chapter that's going vertical. You read about one, two, three, four, five, and six. Well, why does it stop at six? Because that's a time sequence. Seal seven has nothing to do with time. This is all about time here. Each one of these are developing in time. First four horses are coming together. That's one thing that has to happen first in time. Then you have the fifth seal. That's the next thing, and that during that fifth seal, in my opinion, is the final three and a half years. Can I get an amen if you understand? The final three and a half years. Seal five, in my opinion, is the 42 month, or it's called 1260 days, or it's called by Daniel, a time, times, and half a time. At all. They are all interchangeable terms, like if you call your, your dad, He's my father. He's also a welder. He's also a, a, a good man. He's an evangelist. All these names are pointing to the same guy. Jesus has many, many different names. Well, the time of the Great Tribulation has many different names. And uh, depending on who God's referring to, when he's referring to his two witnesses, when he's referring to the woman fleeing in the wilderness, those are his people. He calls that time, twelve. they have 1260 days. When he's referring to the Gentiles who are in the outer court of the temple, when he's referring to the Antichrist, who's a dominant over the nations, he calls that time 42 months. Okay? That's seal five. See seal five up here? See seal five at the top? That's the three and a half year period at the end of the church age, after the horses have developed. Can I get an amen? Are you following me? Then the Antichrist appears in the fifth seal. Are you with me? In the fifth seal, the Antichrist appears in the fifth seal. And this is also the time when the two witnesses, the two witnesses have how long? How long do the two witnesses have, everybody? 1260 days because they're God's people. He calls that time 1260 days. At the end of that three and a half year period, at the end of the fifth seal, is the same time the two witnesses finish their meth ministry of three and a half years. It's all at the end of the fifth seal, at the end of time. And then what happens? The Antichrist kills these guys. Everyone who's dead dies for Christ, and Paul's prophecy comes to pass that the dead will be dead and they raise first. The dead have to die first. And as long as these two witnesses are alive, there's still people to die for Christ. You can't have the living raptured first before the dead are raised first. Unless, of course, you listen to the teachers who tell you there's a whole bunch of raptures and there's a whole bunch of resurrections. The Bible talks about one major resurrection for the body of all believers and one major rapture, not a rapture of, of baby Jesus or a rapture of Elijah or a rapture of Enoch. This is an individual case, not the rapture of the church, the whole body of Christ. There's one. There's one resurrection of all believers from the dead, even though we've had resurrections uh, in the past. Jesus raised people from the dead. There's people raised by Elijah and Elisha. And that's not the resurrection. Okay, 
But there's a resurrection for everybody and a rapture for everybody who's left alive on the earth one time at the end of the trumpets, which will be the seventh trumpet. Okay, so what we have here is we got the trumpets will be blowing during the fifth seal. So let's go. There's not enough room on this chart to show you that the trumpets haven't started blowing yet. And all while these horses are riding here, how, whenever they started, if you want to say they started when Jesus started opening them up, when he went back into heaven. So for the last 2000 years, we've had an increase of, you know, wars, famines, pestilence, and so on, conquerors who wanted to conquer. But we really see these horses uh, dominating in the last hundred years. I mean, really, technically, uh, vi vaccines didn't even come around until about 1894, 1896. And if you want to say that's part of the mark of the beast, you know, uh, for the last hundred years, roughly a little over, you know, you've had these things developing in a massively powerful way. Uh, wars in the last hundred years have dominated er all the wars in history. Pestilence, if you want to say 1918, the flu uh, pandemic that went around killed 50 million people. I don't know what the number is, but it, in the last hundred years, the last century, you could say for sure these horses have had a massive famine, starvation like never before the last hundred years, you, you know, and then now we got the last 30 years and this last generation and we see everything increasing along with technology that we've never seen before. Where God cut off man in Genesis 11 because they were doing whatever they imagined to do and creativity and, and innovations and uh, stuff like that. God stopped them. Whatever he stopped then, he's allowing now. And there's still a cap on it, but, you know, it's possible that we were on the brink of creating artificial intelligence back then. I'm not saying for sure I know that, but we see it happening now. And God stopped mankind in the one language power that they had. And now we see us coming together in one language, in one, one language again. And now that language is even being given to artificial intelligence. They're speaking one language. And uh, we're going to be able to, to do things that we've never thought possible in this generation with Israel becoming a nation. The prophecy says Israel will be back in their own homeland. This is the church age right here. Resurrection. We're coming to the end of the church age. This is the tribulation. The four horses have been riding and riding and riding, and they're almost complete. And when they do, the fifth seal will open with an antichrist figure. This is the hard part, the three and a half years. This is when the witnesses will be, two witnesses will be protected for the first two and a half years when their ministry is over. This is where the trumpets will be blown. Trumpets, trumpets. Trumpet, 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 trumpet. All the trumpets will be blown until we get to the sixth trumpet, which is the war that kills everybody. At the end of that war, everybody will be dead, including the two witnesses. At the sixth trumpet, by the time the sixth trumpet is done, the two witnesses' ministry will be done. The three and a half years will be done. The 42-month rule and reign of the Antichrist will be done. And time will be done. Okay. There's a, and the, the dead are, will be raised and then the living after that. And then God pours out his wrath right here for 75 days. According to the book of Daniel, 75 days is the wrath of God. All right. And then that's how we're looking at this. I just wanted to tie in really the timing of the two witnesses today with you guys with the six trumpet war and how those things co uh, coordinate with each other. They correspond with each other. They correspond with the time of the end of the Antichrist time. He's got 42 months. They got 1260 days. The woman is protected in the wilderness for the woman flees to the wilderness to be protected. That's the 144,000. She's protected for 1260 days. She's got to stay there and be protected for 1260 days while the two witnesses do their ministry for 1260 days while the Antichrist is is uh, killing people all around the world for 42 months while the Gentiles are taking the outer court for 42 months. 